Well, hello, it's Rebecca shackleford Langley here. I'm the Community Manager for the Curious Young Teachers, and I'm here to talk to you about how to use our budgeting spreadsheet. So the purpose of this is for you to get a handle on what you're spending, what you're earning, and whether that's really marrying up in terms of how much you need or want to be earning. It's very easy for those expenses to run away with us, and it's also very easy to not realise that actually your fee compared to your expenses mean that your profit is pretty low. So we really want to help you get a handle on that. Now, this spreadsheet is made up of two pages. We've got an expenses page, that's what we're looking at here. And we've got a takings and profit page, which is on the left tab. If we start with expenses, you can see that we've broken it into categories. So CPD, Continuing Professional Development, Membership, Resources, Business Expenses, and Miscellaneous. Under each category, there are some suggested items. And these are absolutely only suggestions. We really want this to be completely editable by you, make it your own, make it work for you. So the suggestions won't be relevant for everyone. And what's important is that you use them to prompt yourself to kind of remember everything that you really, really should do. So um, we've got course, conferences, events, magazine subscriptions, personal exam fees, piano lessons, curious piano teachers, that's a subscription, um, a theory lesson. So they're just some ideas, but of course, perhaps you go on, um, go to some conference. So you'd want to add that to the list. Okay. Um, perhaps you like to go to the Kadai summer school. So you'd put that in as well. Perhaps, uh, however, you don't have any magazine subscriptions. Okay, so you could either just delete that line completely. So for me, I'd go over here and do a right click and delete the row. Or you could just type over that with something that's relevant to you. Okay, so instead of having put concerts down there, I could have typed concerts up here. Okay, obviously you don't really need them in quite other magazine subscriptions. Okay, so edit that, make it your own. If you've got a lot of CPD activity, then maybe you're going to need some extra rows, and that's absolutely fine. So, in my case, I would go over, select a row, do a little right click, and go up to insert rows. I can then enter whatever the thing is I want to add. I will notice, however, that there are no zeros, no values in column D and column E, and that's because these um, formulae that I popped in here, they don't automatically copy themselves. So you're going to have to manually copy them on a So select the column D and E in say the row above, do a copy, in my case that's the control C, pop down to the rows that need to be filled and then do a paste. So in my case that's a control V. And that's then got the formula that I'm using in column D and E filled in for your new row. So what are these formulas that I'm talking about? Well we might want to look at what our expenses are on an annual basis, or we might want to look at them on a monthly basis. But in terms of our expenses, some of them come out annually, and some of them come out monthly. So your input columns, which are columns B and C, they're split by annual and monthly, and then columns C and E will collate that together. So my examples here, I've got magazine subscriptions, I'm saying that's five pounds a month. So what this is doing is working out that five pounds a month means, of course, sixty pounds a year, and it is just five pounds a month. Conversely, over here I've gone on a course, and that costs three hundred pounds um, in a year, and so obviously the annual summary is three hundred pounds for that value, but it breaks it down and says yes, but that works out as just twenty-five pounds a month. So those columns are summarising what's in these columns B and C, no matter whether it's a monthly or an annual fee, and 
that's the bottom here then totaling it up for that category. So for each category, you put in your various values um, for your um, expenses. So here you can see I've added in £50 a month on books and £10 a month for stationery. And then right at the bottom, a big grand total. And you can see that for all the categories, the, what I filled in, I've got an annual total expenses of 1,320 and that works out as £110 a month. Now, just looking at your expenses on their own isn't really enough to say whether that's good or bad. I mean, if you're earning £1,320 in a total year, then probably expenses of that amount is not good. But of course, if you were earning, say, £100,000, then that sort of level of expenses would be fabulous. And working that out is what this tab is all about. So, you're taking. So, what we find is that quite a few people have lessons of different lengths, perhaps in different places or for different students. So, we put some suggested lesson lengths in 20, 30, 45, 60. Maybe you don't do 45, maybe you do 40. It doesn't matter. You can obviously change those. And then you put in your lesson fee. So, I've picked some slightly random numbers here. Um, maybe you don't do 20 minutes for 15, maybe it's 10. Okay, so put in your own lesson fees and then you need to put in how many students have that lesson length. So I've um, imagined that perhaps I've got 10 on 20 minutes, 4 on 30 and 1 student on 60. The next column is to put in how many lessons per year. So this can be worked out by looking at your term dates. Okay. And that's kind of like the total possible lessons available. The next column is the number of sick days estimated per year. So that might seem quite high. So if that doesn't work for you, then put in a much lower number. But for me, I do kind of estimate that six lessons might be lost either between me being ill, my children being ill, or the students themselves being ill. Okay, so although I might offer, say, 30 lessons per year, perhaps I'm actually only going to get paid for 24. Okay, um, and then this column here is working out how much money I'm getting for those lessons. So in the 20 minute lessons, I'm earning £2,400 a year. Now, you might only be interested in your total expenses over the year, and that's fine. But what this column here is doing is then telling you what that means in terms of a monthly amount that you're actually bringing in. Now, everyone bills differently. Some people bill by the lesson, some people bill monthly or half-termly or termly. So, obviously, in terms of if you don't collect the money monthly, you're not going to be bringing this in on the month, but that's what it would work out as being. Okay, so we've got a nice little setup here where I'm earning £4,872 over the year. So is that good? So this table down here, you don't need to touch anything in that table. Okay, this is taking values from, so the expenses table on the other page, you can see there's my £1,320 annual expenses or 110 monthly. And it's taking values from taking table, so 4,872 annual takings or 406 monthly. Okay, and then it's working out how much I'm making in terms of profit and also in terms of a percentage profit. Now, at the minute, we've got a, a green and a red colouring going on in these four cells here, and that's based on my target value. So I put I want to make an annual profit of 3,000 um, and a monthly profit of 500 and a target profit of 75, sorry, target percentage profit of 75%. So you, these are the values you need to change. So perhaps you think, actually, do you know what? I need to earn 900 pounds a month, um, in which case you can see that, that the monthly profit is 296 pounds. That's not really working out. So it's red. If, however, you said, you know what, all I need to earn is £100 a month, 
then suddenly it goes green because the monthly profit is higher than that value. So similarly, if I said I need to earn a hundred thousand pounds in the year, then my annual profit goes red. Um, or you might want to base it on a percentage profit. So maybe you think 50% profit is brilliant, in which case suddenly my profit goes green, or you might think, um, actually, I'm going to set it pretty high. I don't really want to have many expenses. I'm going to go for 90 percent profit. So these are the values that you need to change depending on what you think you want to be earning in terms of take home after expense pay. These values over here will automatically update. So don't touch those. But this table in takings, that's where you put in your data about your lessons. And this big table over on the expenses page, that's where you log all of your expenses. Any questions, then just send us an email, either to info at curiouspiano.org or directly to me, Rebecca, at curiouspiano.org. We do hope that you'll find this really, really useful and quite interesting. I remember recently-ish going through mine and being slightly horrified to discover that my addiction to books was meaning that my profit was about 30%. Um, so I've had to really look at things in terms of fee level and also what my expenses are. So I hope you'll find it really, really useful. And as I say, any questions, just drop us a line.